Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Kit Conspiracy. This is our Thursday edition and the inspiration that we chose for today's layout is this Victorian registers uh, image. And so that kind of led me to um, making a an unconventional grid, basically. So I started out by trimming down my photos and I'm definitely doing a double page layout for this. And I thought I would start out with them kind of vertically like this, but everything's going to change. Like everything's going to change. So I set my photos aside and said, you know what, I really need to work on the background first to get that kind of register look, or at least what was in the image. So I want them to not be, um, I want them to be like a grid, but not with lines that are straight up and down or straight across vertical. Does that make any sense? I hope that makes some sense. So I want them to have like lines that overlap, I guess. I don't even know what, what it's called, but um, yeah, that was my goal. I am also looking at my papers as I lay them down. And if I put a wood grain on one side, I wanna make sure I put a wood grain on the other side. If I put a ledger paper on the right, I want to make sure I put it on the left. I don't want like the two ledger papers right next to each other or the two wood grains right, right next to each other. So it, I'm really trying to mix up the look of everything by spreading out my papers and not having a lot of blue space left over. So it takes me a little while to play around with this, as you can see. Um, and I'm just going to keep working on it until I kind of find that it is going works uh, for my photos. I also am trying to make sure that certain images, like the bicycle, I don't care if that's covered up. I actually kind of prefer it covered up because my layout has nothing to do with bicycling. Um, it it's a water slide park, so you know an anchor could work, but we're not on a boat, so I don't care if that one gets covered up. Um, and I do know that a lot of these will get covered up, so I'm not too worried about that. But uh, I just, you know, keep flipping things over, moving things around, trying to figure out what is going to work best. And then to fill in those little tiny spots, I'm going to cut some of the postage stamp sized uh, images. They are not really postage stamp size. They're a little bit taller than an actual postage stamp. They're bigger, but they look like a postage stamp. It is, I guess, Simple Stories version of a postage stamp back when this collection came out. And this collection, if case you have missed it, is Good Day Sunshine. It's from like, I think 2014. So that is what the kit that we put together for this week is based off of, if case you are new to the channel today, um, MK over at her channel, Some Assemblage Required. And I have been doing this all month long. This is our third kit we are working on. Each Friday, we release a new kit with all of the same patterned papers in it. We can add whatever embellishments we want and we can pull from our scrap bins or our cardstock, but all of the pattern paper is the same. And then we go from there and make uh, whatever we want. Uh, this week we have some inspiration from some oddball type things like register a register advertisement, but um, we did start out with scrap lifts and sketches earlier in the month. And then, um, next week we aren't going to have any inspiration. So that's going to be rather exciting and interesting. So I finally got the left-hand side, how I wanted it. And now I am kind of adjusting the right-hand side to be the exact reverse of what the left-hand side has. So I will have some, like the entire top row is all in line with one another, just like the bottom row on the left-hand side. So it's, it's a basically a mirror image top to bottom. And that left me with the least amount of blue showing. It's just that one strip right next to the big and sign and right next to the, the life is better and flip flops card, which is going to get moved. The, I'm going to swap that card with the, it's all good card. May, uh, mostly because I really liked the flip flops for whatever reason. I don't know. And, you know, in fact, they're probably covered up anyway. Actually, I think it was the saying on it. Life is better in flip flops is what I, I liked about it. So now I'm just kind of like playing around, seeing if there's anything else that fits in there. 
um, into that little tiny narrow vertical space. And so I'm going to add some wood grain that I had to pull off of some other cards. And that's what I was looking for on those big four by six cards. I was looking for what I could pull in that would um, fill that space in case any of the seams from the cards below peek through behind my photos. I don't want to leave it just completely uh, um, blank. So, so there we go. I've got it pretty much how I want it. And then I start kind of playing with my photos. Um, they are pictures of my uh, my nephew and my son on the water slides. My son is in the, on the orange one. My nephew's on the yellow one. And then one of their friends is in one of the photos too. These photos are really old. They're from 2008. So um, all of these kids are all grown up now. And so then I thought I would mat everything on green because it wasn't popping enough with all of those uh, squared edges below the photos. It was just, they were kind of blending into the background. And so... I popped them up onto this green paper and I'm liking that better, but it's still blending in too much for my liking. The black definitely helped, but I'm going to switch those over to white and I'll tell you why here in a second. I don't really have any black on that, um, on this layout. So I'm going to switch it over to being white and because I have the green underneath, it helped pop it up. I thought originally I wasn't going to put the green there and that that's why I thought the black would be more beneficial. But once I saw the black on top of the green, I quickly swapped it back over to white and then um, left it on the green. And I needed to figure out a way to make those pictures still pop off the page because they just kind of blend in with all of those squared off edges like I mentioned before. So I don't make you sit through watching me do all of the photo backing. Um, and what I finally decide to do is to add a little mixed media. So I'm going to add some white dilutions. And here I am marking off where the photos go because I don't need to waste any of my dilutions underneath the photos directly. I want it to be around the photos to give kind of a white halo effect, which essentially pushes all of those cards that are in the background it pushes them back a little bit further, if that makes any sense. Um, it's kind of, it kind of pushes them to the background and brings the photos to the foreground. Hopefully that is understandable when you actually see it all come together here. So I'm using the white linen dilutions. And then I also used some white linen dilutions shimmer spray to give a little bit of sparkle. So there it is, and I think it looks a lot better. You can still see all of those squared off edges, but they're not so uh, prominent. And it definitely allows the photos to be in the foreground rather than uh, just like melting into the background, if you will. So I'm liking how that looks a lot better. It did warp some of those papers, but they were already um, adhered down with my ATG gun. And what I did was I just took my liquid adhesive, the Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, and stuck it underneath the anything that was kind of popping up. And then um, I, I held it down or put something heavy on top of it until it dried, which doesn't take very long. The Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, it dries very quickly and it's uh, clear and matte. So it's an excellent glue. I highly recommend it. It is my liquid glue of choice. So the title ends up being in three different spots. So my first one over here says end of year or end of the year. And then I'm going to have Raging Waters, which is the name of the park in one location and then Picnic and Bash in the other location because that's what it was. It was an end of the year Picnic and Bash at Raging Waters. So I decided to just go ahead and use all of the thickers that I could. The thicker set that I'm using is called Cedar. I don't know if it's still available or not. If it is, I will put a link to it down below for you in the description box. And there are links to a lot of the products that I am using today uh, aside from the paper because it is so old it's not available anymore. But um, if you are interested in purchasing any of those, you can find the links below. So, and as mentioned on the little ticker that went across, I do get a, a small commission off of that if you use my affiliate link. So I thank you for that if you are someone who has already done that. And um, if you do shopping, I do appreciate it. It does help me out a little bit. 
So while I was just talking about that, I don't know if you noticed, I ran out of A's. I ended up using the V's upside down and cutting apart one of the hashtags and uh, making that the little line for the center of the A just because I ran out and didn't want to have to like go with a different font or something. Sometimes you just have to make it work. I know most of the time I end up using my dies, but I am still trying to work through my sticker, my thicker collection or my thicker stash. And so um, you will see me pull those out when I can or when, um, when I have the letters that work well with my layout. So, so now I am working on figuring out where I'm going to put any of the embellishments. And I am working pretty much off of that sticker sheet, the two sticker sheets. Um, I think I do maybe cut up a little bit from one of some of the cards. Let's see here, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I end up cutting up a, one of the three by four cards to finish off the layout. But uh, the sticker sheet had quite a bit on it that was super useful for all of these layouts in uh, the series that I am working with here. I say the series, not necessarily the series of Kit Conspiracy, but the series of photos. Um, and that is one reason I chose these photos. I sometimes like will work on part of it and get like three or four photos from one event done and then I move on to something else. But I've been really enjoying getting the entire event documented and I don't feel like I have to use all of the photos. Um, and this is certainly not all of the photos, but I do want a good sampling of them. And you know, there's a couple of layouts where I got 10 or at least one that I got 10 on. There's no way I could have fit 14. So I ended up having to do another um, layout. I could have probably squished this down to a single page, but then you wouldn't have seen any background or embellishment. And I actually was going to use more photos than this, but if you noticed, I ditched the one of the um, two boys outside of the water that did, it was a photo of my nephew and their friend, not my son. So I, I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to edit that one out and not use it. So, um, Yeah, I, I like I'm liking this much better anyway because this the photos look like they all go together and that one didn't it didn't have any color or anything it just had you know it was kind of boring so <laughs> anyway um, I am inking everything up with some black soot distress ink to make it pop off the page and I these little arrow pieces I'm gonna layer those all up along the edge of this photo in the bottom right hand corner to complete my um, cluster down here and I am kind of following the line of my nephew's face in the photo as to where the uh, little arrows line up because I obviously don't want to cover his face but I want some movement I don't want them strictly vertical like in a straight line I want some movement in there and um, so kind of making him pop back and forth gives me that feeling of movement and I like the way that that looks a lot better than just having them straight up and down. I don't mind if his hand is covered up or part of the inner tube is covered up. I just didn't want to cover his face, obviously. Another good reason to have those uh, little arrows go back and forth is because a lot of the stuff or almost everything on this layout is very, it's a lot of straight lines. Everything is like 90 degree angles and straight lines. And so it softens it up and has more of an organic feel by adding those arrows in kind of a chicane versus just that a column. And so that made me a lot happier. And then adding some other additional embellishments like the snow cone, which has got rounded edges and the flamingo, which has a round circle behind it with that sun um, softens the whole layout out up just a bit. And that makes me a lot happier. So I'm liking the way that that's looking. And then I decided to move Picnic and Bash down to make it a part of this cluster that is in the bottom right hand corner. So my clusters basically go, or my embellishments basically go in a diagonal from um, upper left to lower right. And I, I like the way that that looks a lot better. I am not really doing a cluster around the word that says raging, or around the title portion that says raging waters. I'm just leaving it as is. And I think that's okay because there's enough stuff going on on that side and around it that I don't need to worry about it too much. I also like the fact that the um, 
mixed media that I added makes these additional pieces that I've put on top pop a little bit more. So it brings them more to the forefront as well as the photographs. So that's, that's a, a big bonus to having that mixed media on there. So now I'm going to just finish it off by adding some hearts here and there. These are just off the sticker sheet, but I am popping them up onto fun foam. I just using the cheap fun foam that you get in the kids section at Walmart. It is adhesive backed on one side and I typically stick the adhesive backed portion onto my embellishment and then I use my liquid glue to adhere it to my layout. That seems to work best because if you put the liquid glue on your embellishment, oftentimes the embellishment will cup a bit and then uh, it doesn't stick as well. So that's just the little tip that I have for you and that's what's worked for me um, and I hope that works for you. So I'm super curious to see what MK has done today for this particular uh, inspiration piece. So don't forget to check out her channel. She and I have been doing this series together all along. And so every day that I post, um, or every week we post on Saturday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And any other days that you get layouts using the kits, they are bonus layouts. So go and check her out. Her link is down below in my description box so that you can get to her channel easily and um, go and leave her a little bit of love as well. That's my completed layout. I hope that you enjoy it or um, have enjoyed the video at least. If you have questions or comments, you can always leave those down below. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have, uh, haven't hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another kit share. Bye-bye.